I'm Sarah, I'm from Tafwa, and I love listening to today FM, today FM Rocks. My name is Freddy, I'm uh, from Gamia Town. I listen to Mario on the traffic jam every afternoon. Hi, my name is Salah, I live in Asinu, today FM Rocks. My name is Denasa and I'm from Lutoka and I love listening to Today FM. My name is Ulonila, I work at Golden Point Resort. I love listening to Today FM, it rocks in Rakiraki. I'm Mary from Mandera. I love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. We love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate and this is FBC News. Tonight, LTA uncovers more fraudulent dealings. Giramatia celebrations continue in the Western Division and business as usual at U.S. Embassy as Donald Trump becomes 45th U.S. President. The Land Transport Authority has noted an increase in fraudulent transactions where people impersonate LTA officers and offer taxi or other permits in exchange for cash. These transactions often take place over the phone, where the unsuspecting buyer is charged a certain amount of cash for a permit, often through a money transfer service or as a deposit to a bank account. Pranita Prakash reports. The Land Transport Authority is receiving average six complaints a week. Some claim to have paid up to $17,000, only to realize later it was all for nothing. LTA board chair Vijay Maharaj says they are doing all they can to catch the culprits. Uh, that complaint has been received by LTA and uh, internal investigation is going on. And as soon as we find there's some strong evidence, we'll give it to FICAC. The purchase of taxi, minibus or any other public service vehicle permit cannot be done or processed unless it takes place at an LTA office over the counter. The LTA is also improving its processes that will help reduce such fraudulent acts. We are now cracking down on that and you'll find in the future all those applications has to be processed. Aligned to that is also you'll see uh, that um, we're trying to get most of these things online so that there's not much human interactions and hopefully when that's fully online, hopefully by end of this year and by the time the new CEO comes, all this will be a thing of the past. According to LTA, they will not accept, process or attend to any request for a PSV permit application because all PSV permits excluding rental and hire have been frozen since 2011. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Giramatia celebrations continued in Lautoka today, remembering indentured laborers who were brought to Fiji to work in the cane fields. A total of 42 ships made a total of 87 voyages to Fiji carrying British Indian labourers before the last ship, Sutledge, arrived in 1916. Ellen Stahls reports. Acting Prime Minister Ayaside Kayum told a packed-out Girmit Centre that the desire for Girmitiers to persevere and live is still evident today, despite the hardships and mistreatment in the past. It is not only lives on the descendants, but the determined and tenacious spirit of the Girmitiers that serves as a source of inspiration for all Fijians today. During his speech, Syed Kayum gave some time for the readings of some real-life accounts from Girmatiers on how they were mistreated and fooled into coming to Fiji. Hundreds of children present at the celebration dressed up for the occasion. While celebrations continued inside the Girmit Centre, youngsters as well as young adults had an opportunity to look around at the displays and some of the ancient equipment used by the first Girmatiers. On display were real-life artifacts, working tools and cutlery used by the indentured laborers and some have preserved them all these years. My father came to Fiji in about 1915 or 1916 and uh, as, a, as a jeweler, so if we preserve this culture, they will be saved, otherwise it will be gone. So this I'm trying to do. For me, I feel proud to be born here in Fiji and uh, see how my ancestors have come up. It really touched my heart when I heard some of the uh, traditional songs. It's a day that commemorated the memory and hard work of the Girmatiers and allowed their stories to live on through time through the younger generations. Ellen Stahls, FBC News.
And Ellen is on standby in Nandi. Ellen, tell us more about the celebrations. Yes, Jackie, celebrations did continue and today it was Lotoka City's turn. Hundreds of students from primary schools in and around Lotoka gathered at Shirley Park where they marched at around 9.30 this morning from Shirley Park all the way to the Girmit Centre where celebrations were held today. Chief Guest and Acting Prime Minister Ayasaid Kayum said that it was a bit of a history lesson. He talked about how important it was for us to commemorate these Girmatiers and how important it was for us to remember the contributions that they have made for Fiji. This included, he added, laying down sugarcane railway tracks, also clearing land and harvesting this cane for production. He also uh, took a chance to be able to garland the descendants, some of those who were present at the celebrations today. Children also uh, were very excited about the event and dressed up in their favorite Girmatia outfits. And there were also a lot of displays and all in all, Jackie, a lot of students learned a lot. But I also learned a lot in terms of what it was like for these Girmatias, the struggles they had to overcome to build a Fiji that I now know and love. Back to you, Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Ellen. Meanwhile, Girmit celebrations continued in Suva last night. The Indian High Commission hosted over 200 guests to a night of recognition for those who are part of the indentured system. Minister for Health and Medical Services Rosie Akbar officiated the event, saying it's important not to forget our roots. We need to celebrate our legacy. We need to celebrate the diversity that we currently have in Fiji, and we should pay tribute to our forefathers, to the Girmitis who brought that. Don't expect any major changes in services at the United States Embassy in Suva under the Donald Trump administration. As the world comes to terms with the new Republican leadership in America, it's business as usual in this part of the world. The 45th President of the United States, Donald Trump, has about two months to settle into the White House. However, when he does take up office, there will be little change for Fiji. I don't anticipate any change in the services that the embassy provides. Uh, as I said, most of our staff are career appointees. They work as career diplomats. Of course, we also have our local staff that stay here throughout the changes of the you know, American staff that come and go. Ambassador Sefkin was speaking to FBC News last night towards the end of the counting, but still too early to call the election for Trump. In any case, she says the diplomatic mission here will continue with business as usual. Um, so it shouldn't really affect, we still carry out our basic functions of conducting our uh, diplomacy, of providing our consular services, our, our public diplomacy programming. So I expect that to continue just as it has been. Trump secured a convincing win in the U.S. elections, marking a return of a Republican president after eight years. Edwin Nunn. FBC News. As reported on CNN Money Today, the world trade was already stalling before Donald Trump won the U.S. presidential election. Now one of the main engines of global economic growth could go into reverse. As Rachel Nutt reports, this election will not only affect the U.S. but will have indirect impacts on Fiji. People in this country that have to go out. History was definitely made yesterday. Donald Trump's presidency striked instability. As economist Nilesh Gounder tells us, if Trump is able to act upon the promises he made in terms of trade agreements, then there can be a reversal of some of the gains Fiji has made. At the moment, I don't see any direct impact uh, on, 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 on Fiji or, or any Pacific Island country. But as I said before, uh, it remains to be seen uh, what kind of policies uh, Donald Trump uh, implements because although he has said a lot uh, during, the, during the campaign, mm -hmm. the, the real question is whether he is able to put uh, those uh, into practice. International economists have also predicted that Trump's presidency can result in a global recession. That there might be indirect impacts and the indirect impacts is uh, the extent to which changes in the U.S. policy will affect trade uh, partnership with Australia and New Zealand. And of course, if the Australian and New Zealand economies don't do well, then that will then impact on tourism, 
will impact on remittances. Trump has promised to rip up major trade deals and slap huge tariffs on goods from China and Mexico, two of the United States' biggest trading partners. Pacific Island countries have always looked to USA for political leadership in international forums and institutions. And uh, we don't know what approach Donald Trump is going to take. This uh, president's uh, designate of the USA actually is a major threat to the global economic order as is. And that explains the collapse of the markets. The waiting game now begins to see what approach President Donald Trump will take and what impacts it will have on Fiji and other Pacific Island countries. As CNN Money has said, looking at the world markets crashing, our futures are tanking. Rachel Nath, FBC News. He spent more than a year embroiled in a nasty, divisive campaign, but Donald Trump promises unity for all Americans under his presidency. This after Trump defeated Hillary Clinton in the race to the White House last night to become the 45th president of the USA. This story from TVNZ. Enter Donald J. Trump. Sorry, President Trump, as he will be in January. This is the most momentous and unexpected election victory in America's 240-year history. Now it's time for America to bind the wounds of division. We have to get together. And his opponent, whom he'd put to the sword, was no longer crooked Hillary, the woman who should be in prison, the most corrupt politician ever. She was this. Hillary has worked very long and very hard over a long period of time. And we owe her a major debt of gratitude for her service to our country. The outsider had taken on the establishment and won. According to exit polls, winning massively among white working class men, but also a majority of white women, and faring no worse with Hispanics than his predecessor did four years ago. His supporters were ecstatic. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm from Austin, Texas. I love the guy. I, I think he's been mischaracterized by the media through the entire thing. Hillary HQ could have been vote remain. So much early optimism. <laughs> only to be replaced by mounting gloom and then despair. Demonstrations against President-elect Donald Trump have taken place in states around the U.S. The demonstrations, which mirrored protests from Seattle to Pittsburgh, follow protests in the pre-dawn hours in which crowds openly disavowed the president-elect with a few protesters resorting to vandalism. Protesters also burned Trump in effigy, KNTV reported. Coming up on FBC News, I will not resign, supervisor of elections, response to NFP, and Fiji Corrections welcomes new recruits. Stay with us. It's me, Sinsta, here, right from the Rekidiki town. Our super breakfast show, I'm listening to you. When breakfast show, I'm listening to you. 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 You know something? Welcome back, this is FBC News. Election Supervisor Mohamed Sanim has defended his remarks on Twitter following calls for his resignation by the National Federation Party. NAP President Thupon Dalo has taken the issue with Sanim commenting on certain public matters. Dalo says Sanim posted inappropriate tweets vilifying and bullying a reporter, questioning how a media outlet conducts its business. Sanim says the NFP has every right to its opinions. Those calling for resignations should look back into their own uh, houses and see whether any of their party's people resigned and they made racist statements and stuff. But as far as the FEO is concerned, as SOE, I, um, I respect anybody's opinion about their freedom of expression to request or demand certain things. 
Uh, as far as I'm concerned, um, I will not be resigning. Uh, I have a lot to do before 2018. Dranin Dalo has called on the Constitutional Officers Commission to intervene and deal with Salim's behavior. The Human Rights and Anti-Discrimination Commission says it is vital for those arrested or detained to know and exercise their rights. Director Ashwin Raj made this statement while launching the Rights of Arrested and Detained Persons poster at the Tothongo Police Station in Suva today. Ali Kimbia reports. In an effort to promote more accountability and transparency, police officers should understand that every Fijian has a right when arrested. People will just basically sort of uh, know exactly what their constitutional rights are. Remember, for a lot of people, this is not everyday business. They're not taken in every day. They're not arrested or detained every day. This happens, you know, once in a lifetime, and they need to sort of kind of know that, you know, as citizens of the country, they're entitled to basic rights. The Human Rights Commission has distributed posters to various police stations to ensure that these rights are protected. Acting Commissioner of Police Isikeli Lingayiri says it is important for police officers to be accorded with the right knowledge of various rights. To be able to accord to the members of, this, of the society or citizens who are brought in as suspects the right which is enshrined in section 13 of the constitution. Raj says putting up posters will not only empower the public but the police as well in upholding the law of this country. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. The Fiji Correction Services boosted its manpower today with the passing out of 54 new prison officers. The pass-out parade at the Namboro Correction Center is timely with two new institutions due to open in the Western Division soon. The 54 new recruits will be posted to the new facilities to help care for the 1,799 inmates that are currently under the correction service care. We have two new institutions that are currently under construction in Lotoka. The uh, new Lotoka Remand Center for men, the new Lotoka Correctional Facility for women, and also Remand Facility for women. So those are three altogether. So that's why we're doing this recruitment at the moment, so that by the time the construction is completed, we have the necessary resources eh, to go in men and operate these correctional institutions. New recruit 24-year-old Nanronga Led, Manueli Ratunia Rawa says it's a lifetime opportunity, but it also comes with responsibilities. I'm so fortunate to be one of the recruits. This task is not an easy one, trying to change lives. And yes, I'm ready to give my all and work in this uh, institution. Ken says right decision is critical to these new recruits as he welcomes them to the business of saving lives. He adds the correction service will continue to give another chance to those that fall on the wrong side of the law. Saini Animboila, ABC News. The Fiji Elections Office is running a three-day workshop on building resources in democracy, governance and elections in a bid to improve Fiji's electoral processes. More than 60 participants are attending the workshop that's seen as the build-up to the 2018 national elections. Rachel Nath reports. While opening the training in Suva this morning, New Zealand's High Commissioner to Fiji, Mark Ramsden, says elections everywhere should be a process of continuous improvement. And he believes Fiji is doing just that. It's really important that those recommendations get reviewed, get looked at um, and get addressed in the lead up to the 2018 election. This workshop is picking up one of those recommendations about the training of polling agents. Ramsden says the New Zealand government will continue to support Fiji's elections as it did in in the 2014 national elections. I feel like to be in a position where it has carried out initiatives to build capacity within most of its stakeholders. Um, in that regard, the Multinational Observer Group from 2014 had already recommended that the FEO should run some capacity training for political parties and political agents. The International Training Bridge will continue for another three days. Rachel Nath, FBC News. The involvement of parents and guardians in their children's educational activities helps enhance student performance in school. This was emphasized at the principal by the principal education officer, primary Marika Mbaleva, while opening the first information center in the country for parents and guardians at Narere Primary School in Nasinu today. Savaira Thambor reports. This refurbished information center will assist parents understand what their children are involved with in school 
Principal Education Officer Primary Marika Mbaleva reiterated the vital role parents play in investing in quality education. For you, our parents, we play a vital role. This facility which are going to run today doesn't make sense if you do not support it. Some parents are proud of what the school has provided for them. That I have seen this thing have been open for our parents. It will be easy for our children. They're good now. Yeah. New system. Head of the school, Pamananda Naidu, says the initiative will act as a guideline to students and parents on the expectations of the ministry in achieving expected results. Sabera Tambua, FBC News. Three inmates tried to escape from the Suva court complex this morning by jumping onto a parked taxi. The taxi driver had left the engine on and was helping a passenger near the cell block where people are detained before appearing in court. This is when one of the three, who was not handcuffed, sat in the driver's seat while the other two took the back seat. Ravindra Dutt says his only aim was to save his taxi from being driven away. I just come quickly to grab my key by the time he starts the car. Then uh, I off the car and he start the car three times I struggle to do that and by the time the police come to help me. Police spokesperson Ananai Soro says they are looking into the matter. The first round of auditions for Today FM's Lip Sync Challenge was held last night. The first of its kind, the challenge is being held in partnership with Horse of Chameleon and O'Reilly's Bar. The concept has been taken from the Lip Sync Battle American TV series and generated interest from an array of talented youths. Two of the performers, they did um, songs like Sai. Um, he's a Korean um, artist. And for him to know the words, like you know, the Korean uh, lyrics, that was amazing. And um, the other one was a Hindi song, um, Kantalaga. So it was, it's, it was really good. I loved it. The three remaining auditions will be held every Wednesday for the next three weeks. Now to sports, here's Jamie with the very latest. Thanks, Jackie, and good evening. Coming up after the break, Nikiai's second win against the World Barbarians. And overseas teams ready for Oceani 7. Stay with us for this and more. This is Mani Rabu from uh, Batam. Uh, I love listening to Gold FM. Only the classic hits. I'm Sela Sadakao from uh, Vatukola. I only listen to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold I'm Vale and I'm working at Golden Crow Resort and I love listening to Gold FM because it plays a really wide range of classic hit music. I'm Saini Sakio from Kashmir Wotoka. I like Gold FM, but only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Vodafone Flying Fijians coach John McKee has named four local players in the 23-member team to take on the World Barbarians on Saturday. Suva halfback Siru Pepeli Wularika has forced his way into the starting 15, relegating Nemea Kenatale to the bench while Nicola Matowalu has been left out. The front row sees experienced, experienced props Kempizi Mafu and Manasa Saulo combining with Tali Sasson. Suva forward Mosese Woka will partner with Naulian Dawai while captain Akapu Singera is at number eight. Nikki has selected a strong midfield combination of Racing Metro's Albert Vuli Vuli and Aseli Tikwe Rutuma with Ben Volovola at the fly half position. Montpellier's Nemani Nandolo and Waisea and Adelevo are on the wings and in an exciting move, Nikki has shifted Benito Masilevu to the fullbacks position. Meanwhile, Fiji 7's gold medalist Vatemo Ravovo is named on the bench. Meanwhile, with history against them, the Flying Fijians will only be chasing down a second ever win against the World Barbarians. The last and only time Fiji beat the Barbarians was way back in 1970. Rohit Deo reports. It will be a battle for supremacy when the Flying Fijians take on the World Barbarians on Saturday. With a win each to both teams, Coach John McKee says it's a good opportunity to play a team which they hardly get as opponents. I look, you know, the Barbarians, you know, great uh, traditional club and, you know, it's a very traditional fixture, not, not one that you get many opportunities to play against and I know the, the boys are really looking forward to the game on, um, on Friday night. You know, they, they know some of the players in the opposition and there will be some, some real challenges there. Maki adds that playing the Barbarians will be a perfect build up for the test against England next week. You know, we're looking forward to the, to the, you know, the Barbarian 
game in, in terms of the, of the way the game's played, but it's a very, very important game for us and our, and our in, in, in part of the November tour, and, and certainly we're approaching it very seriously and you know, working on our game plan and, and our accommodations, getting our team cohesion this week and, and you know, looking you know, at a good performance on Friday to, to launch ourselves into the, into the week against England. Wing Nemani Nandolo, who joined Montpellier earlier this season, is looking forward to the clash against the Barbarians. Obviously, I've been in the Southern Hemisphere for the majority of my career, and um, you know, it's my second stint now over here in Europe. And look, enjoying the, the lifestyle, and you know, rugby's changed from the last time I was uh, I played here um, in Europe, and yeah, just really enjoying it. The Flying Fijians play the Barbarians at 8:30 a.m. on Saturday. Rohit Dill, FBC Sports. The Cook Islands men's rugby sevens team aren't just here to make up the numbers at the Oceania Sevens Championship. After finishing fifth in last year's competition, the Cook Islanders are targeting much greater things. Meli Tavanga with the details. The Cook Islanders are talking up their chances of a return to the Sevens World Series. The process we've got to, you know, we've been training and making sure that we get our little fundamentals right. So making sure that we tackle well, we pass the ball, all those little things that you, you take for granted, we've got to get those things right and you know the, the result will come. So it's about the process, uh, ending in a good result. So. Team manager Johnston says his team is capable of causing a stir this weekend, despite being drawn in a challenging pool. One of our locals, uh, Sailor Sinangi, he's, he's one of the boys that is part of the group. Uh, he's been with us since 2013, he's been playing in the, uh, the national team. Wonderful player from Rotoka. Uh, very, very good players, so absolutely looking forward to it. Um, Francis Smith, uh, Junior Kidia from New Zealand, Junior Napar also from New Zealand too. They've, um, yeah, they've come in too, plus another other uh, couple of boys that, that have joined us here. Yeah. Vice Captain Junior Naparra says the team is in much better shape than it was at the start of their training. Yeah, we've been training to, um, to go out there and um, you know, to put our country back up there and uh, to make our people proud back in the island and all over the world. And our first game is uh, it's our first uh, step, so we're going to concentrate on our first game. Rarotonga base players dominate the side, which is grouped with Australia, Samoa, Solomon Islands and New Caledonia in Pool B. If the side qualified as the first place of the second tier nations, which includes Papua New Guinea, American Samoa and Tonga, it will earn a spot at the Wellington, Sydney and Hong Kong Sevens tournament. Meli Tawanga, FBC Sports. The Nauru 7 side is making use of all the facilities available here in Fiji in the lead-up to the Oceania 7s, which starts tomorrow. The Minnows have prepared well and will be looking to create some upsets. Coach Dan Cairo says they are impressed with the reception they have received in Fiji. Preparation is okay for, uh, for the boys. Uh, morale is high. Uh, coming for, to these uh, facilities here in Fiji, we're really enjoying uh, the green grass and the, uh, the HPU, Fiji rugby gyms and this and that. You know, the Oceania Sevens Championships kicks off tomorrow at 10 a.m. at the ANZ Stadium. That's it from sports this evening. ANZ Bank has donated $10,000 towards Wild's Div de Morta campaign aimed at raising funds for children with cancer in Fiji. ANZ Fiji Acting Chief Executive Sud Minim says they are committed towards helping drive awareness around the treatment, prevention and cure of cancer. Minim says ANZ and staff are passionate about this cause and recently raised $13,000 through staff-led activities for Pinktober. It was sunshine in most parts of Fiji today with cloudy periods in the afternoon. Lombasa and Bar were the warmest centres at 32 degrees, leaving Suva and Savo Savo the coolest at 28. For tomorrow, much of the same conditions as today are expected to continue around the nation. And looking further on to Saturday, the forecast is more fine weather. At sea, southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. Recapping the main stories for tonight, LTA uncovers more fraudulent dealings. Giramatia celebrations continue in the Western Division. And business as usual at U.S. Embassy as Donald Trump becomes 45th U.S. President. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM, to this week's poll question, and we are asking, are Fijian parents neglecting proper diet for children? To answer, visit our FBC website.
Remember to send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. Until tomorrow, I'm Jackie Spate. Good night. Bula FM, number 2 and Serri.